days, I think of overcrowdedness. Buildings. Concrete. Trash. Scaffolding. People. I have been in New York all my life. I believe that New York has enough green space for the amount of people in it. Why don't we have greenhouses? Why don't every building could have like fresh food and we could like be growing food on our building instead of these cell towers? Why don't we have green spaces? There are a lot of empty lots that are going to waste. This is the Lower East Side, which historically was where immigrants all came to New York City. So the population of this particular neighborhood went from 15,000 people in 1974 to like 5,000 in 1980. A building went to start on fire and the fire department would let it burn. There were so many fires, people were afraid for their families. There was no police coming over here. This was a very tough, tough area. It was like a no man's land. There were hundreds of abandoned buildings and lots around here. This is La Plaza Cultural, it's one of the largest community gardens again in the city. Um, and it's just, I mean, just take a look at it. it, it this, this is an amazing place. Yeah, there's chicken in here. There's a bunch of chickens in this garden. There's a lot of lead in the soil in New York City. There's probably asbestos from the buildings because they were older buildings. A lot of the bigger gardens have created these ponds where they can recycle water. Uh, water is a really valuable asset in these gardens. It, this city is mostly uh, uh, has impervious surfaces. So the more community gardens you have where water can be absorbed in these places, the better chance you have of less pollution in the rivers and, and less water into the combined sewer outflow. Gardens Rising is a green infrastructure project that's been funded by the state of New York, which has given us a grant to build green infrastructure in the community gardens. It's very rare for a city kid to be able to work outside and just get their hands dirty. Many of the kids have never seen a rake before they started working for us. Gardens Rising is doing, um, they're trying to implement green infrastructure in the different parts of the gardens in the Lower East Side. And we're collecting data for them. And the design team is going to use this data to figure out what type of things that they can put in the gardens um, and what type of things will make it better for wo uh, water collection. For Gardens Rising, there's, there's 47 community gardens and we want to build stormwater infrastructure in them, but we don't know where to begin. So we, we start by collecting data like how much of the land is, is permeable, how many trees are there, how many plants are there, how, how dense is it. The basic system is that the, all the sewer water from all the apartments and houses and buildings in the city gets treated. 100% of it gets treated in treatment facilities. But that collection system also collects rainwater. It's been a really good program, I think, and it brings the kids into the gardens, teaches them about the environment and what's really important. And so they can become gardeners themselves, bring their families here, feel comfortable, and expand their idea of what their neighborhood is about. A lot of the community gardeners who started these gardens are in my age group and so they're i hate to say it but we're aging out i mean we're not going to be here forever we can't bend over like we used to we can't do all the work we used to so getting youth involved in these gardens is crucial to the to the legacy of the gardens and to the further momentum of keeping these gardens alive and thriving if young people don't get involved in community gardens we're lost so the idea of community garden starts with the word community, people an opportunity to, to get together and meet one another and enjoy themselves. The gardens themselves, you know, they're 
environmentally a great thing, but culturally they're as important as they are environmentally. My name is Max. I'm a community gardener in the East Village and also a supervisor with Lungs and Gardens Rising. Me and my mom had a plot in the garden and she, you know, taught me a lot about gardening and the whole community garden kind of helped raise me. Gardens can be a place where people recycle their food waste. They can be a place where people congregate to do cultural events and it can be a place to learn about how to grow food and lots of different other, many other things. The beans, beans are going to grow here. These are tomatoes, you can see the little tomatoes growing. I'm Evelyn Maldonado. Ephraim Maldonado. And we've been here over 40 years. In 1983, Mayor Koch had a radio station. His sister, Carmen Maldonado, this is Ephraim, and she called him speaking about this empty lot that she wanted it to make a garden and he said yes. Los Amigos is um, when we started this here in the beginning we had a lot of friends that really helped so my sister-in-law said okay we're gonna name it Los Amigos that means the friends. He wanted to feel like he was in Puerto Rico yeah. like at the island so you know that's what this is all about the little house like things from Puerto Rico to remind you that you're in the island feel comfortable you're away you're yeah. away from home but you're home it's not only for latin people spanish everyone is welcome in this yeah, garden it's open for everybody the, yeah the gates are always open and they all come here they they sit they relax we chat it's wonderful and they have their own little space and they can plant whatever they want in 1996 rudolph giuliani tried to sell all the gardens in new york city he tried to condemn this garden he tried to condemn all the gardens to sell it to developers it was a huge uproar, a fight. Uh, people protested in the streets. We went to court. Finally, uh, there was a settlement uh, by Elliot Spitzer, who was the attorney general at that time, between the city and uh, the state and the gardeners, in which we lost 200 gardens, but we were able to rain, retain 400. So that's where we are now. We're still at an uneasy piece because the city owns the property and we are not giving leases, we're giving licenses for four years and the, within the license it says the city can take away the property anytime it wants to. It used to be enough to say that these community gardens add value to your neighborhood and leave a go at that, but because of the pressure to build in the city and um, because of the pressure to build affordable housing in the city, all of them legitimate reasons, it, these gardens are under more pressure and, we, and, and because of the more pressure we need to find more reasons to make sure that the, the two key words are resiliency and sustainability. These gardens reflect what's going on in the entire city. This entire city is bombarded with outside money coming in, taking over and displacing the people who live here. The city is contracting and if, if all you have is, is apartments and buildings and nothing else, what, how does that make this a livable city? That's what I tell everybody, go to meetings and fight, never give up, never, because we fought so hard for this, we worked so hard for this garden, we don't want anyone to take it. To a large degree, my argument is that it's not owned by the government, it's owned by the people who live in the city, and we own the land. Uh, we own the land. And I keep saying that to everybody who listens to me, don't ever say that it's city owned. The people own this land. It's always very tough here. and. Um, yeah, life continues here, but it's uh, it's not easy. It's not easy. It's still not easy on the Lower East Side. And we're still here, and we're gonna be here yeah, for a long here. time because yeah. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, yeah, and we try to maintain it. That's the main thing. So when they come back, they have a place to come back to. They can come here, reminisce, chat.